Sometimes when I'm alone in the garden, I find myself involuntarily closing my eyes to better feel the sun on my face. In the springtime, the sun is so considerate and kind, gently warming everything it touches. In these peaceful, warm days, I contemplate what it means to be committed to slow living and how a simple life can be so rich with purpose and meaning. How can the peaceful rhythm of my home support my nervous system? How can it help my family feel calm and grounded despite all of the hustles and bustles of modern life? When life becomes overwhelming, I turn to a few slow, simple living practices to help me find my footing again. I bake bread, I knit, I read a favorite book that I have read before, perhaps even many times. Sometimes I pick an area of my home to deep clean and I focus only on making it truly shine again. As a highly sensitive person, I find that when life moves too quickly, with too many errands and drop-offs and tasks and to-dos, I easily become overwhelmed and out of sorts. My dysregulated nervous system can have a ripple effect. The children easily pick up on my mood and they will also become dysregulated. Clutter will pile up around the house. Nothing seems to get done and I feel like I am falling further and further behind. But then I remember that I have built a life around the idea of a peaceful rhythm that will support me in times of overwhelm. That a slower, simpler life is one that makes me feel truly calm, truly grounded, truly nurtured. That when I am fully resourced, I can nurture my children and my home. That I can radiate my calm and it will touch everyone around me. My slow and simple life is sometimes misunderstood. I homeschool my children. They aren't involved in dozens of sports teams or activities. While we have regular days every week to meet up with friends for socialization and time in nature, I don't fill our hours with very many predetermined places to be. And so this lifestyle can seem lacking to some folks. But for us, it is the heart of our calm and peaceful lives. It gives us the spaciousness to read and learn about anything that we like. It allows for long hours spent in the kitchen together or out in the garden or curled up on the couch. It means we can be intentional about what things we bring into our home and how we want to behave with each other. My own self-nurturing practices are woven in throughout the rhythm of my day. I allow myself time to write and read in the earliest morning hours before anyone else is even stirring. I have a break for tea in the mid-morning and try to focus fully on the experience so that I can take some deep breaths and recenter myself. In the early afternoons after lessons, we have a bit of quiet time where the children can read or play simple games, and I can savor a few minutes to myself to meditate or escape into a book. In the later afternoons, while the children enjoy some fresh air in the backyard, I turn to the kitchen. Maybe I'll knead some bread or make a batch of simple scones or get our supper started. I will allow my mind to gently sort out the business of the day and reprioritize the chores that still need doing while being realistic about everyone's current needs and moods. It's a balancing act sometimes for sure, but it usually seems to work out in the end. At least that's the goal. A peaceful home will look different for everybody. There's no real rules to slow, simple living 
Those of us who have embraced this lifestyle all seem to agree, however, that modern life can be incredibly overstimulating, expensive, and leave us feeling somehow stuffed too full while also feeling rather empty. Modern life can be convenient, and I do not discount the wonders of technology and science that make our lives safer and healthier, more efficient, and even more equitable. But when our lives are dominated by the hustle of productivity culture and by an endless amount of activities to ensure that our children are supposedly well-rounded, then I am forced to admit that I prefer a life that is more closely rooted in ancestral practices of tending the home. A life filled with daily celebrations and rituals, with small pleasures and a slower pace. So when I feel overwhelmed or out of sorts, all I have to do is close my eyes and remember where I am supposed to be. A rhythm built for slow, simple living is one that is easy to return to, one that incorporates enough rest and water and movement and mindfulness. One where there is always some kind of useful or grounding task to be completed that can be practiced with intention. By modeling this for my children, I hope I am teaching them the tools they will need to be kind, calm, grounded people who will feel capable and confident as they move through the world. Children who will notice the small joys of nature and the stillness within themselves. So they turn their faces to the sun and truly feel its gentle warmth on a slow spring morning.